so I am back at it with a few videos today. The book that I'm going to be talking about today is Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief. It is written by Rick Riordan. So he, this book is the first in a series, which is kind of interesting to see like the first in the series versus the last in the series, which is what I've talked about previously with the Dark Fates book. This book is about the Camp Half-Blood Chronicles. So it was created into two films. I personally love the films. Um, I saw the films first. I, I just read this book for the first time. A lot of people read this series when it first came out in 2006, but I never did. I didn't jump on that train of Percy Jackson. A lot of my students would consider this the Harry Potter series of their generation. In October 28th of 2011, this particular book had been on the children's best selling list for 245 straight weeks. Short summary is Percy Jackson, in the book series is Eleven. He's a misfit. He gets bounced around from school to school. He um, finds himself in the middle of some sort of battle constantly. At first the readers think that this battle he's alluding to is more of his own coming of age sort of awkward middle schooler-esque story. But we find out that Percy is actually a demigod and so in this magic realism sort of story narrative his father is one of the gods. We find out later that he has not chosen to abandon his mother like Percy has thought his whole life, but actually can't interact with Percy. He ends up going to Camp Half-Blood where he learns Greek history, he learns how to fight, he meets people. Um, Annabeth is one of his friends. He has a satyr, Grover, as sort of a keeper. He has a centaur as his sort of advocate. So when Zeus's lightning bolt goes missing, which is becomes the entire conflict of the plot, Percy is both thought to be the thief of this lightning bolt, leading to the name of the story, Percy Jackson, the lightning thief, but he's also sent on a quest to go find the lightning bolt, which is kind of interesting that adults would put an 11 year old in that kind of danger. Apparently that's totally normal as if you're a demigod, but I kind of found that a little weird. I think the movie does a really, really good job showing that map on screen as they travel. Um, the other thing I think the movie does as a comparison is by making Percy a little older. He's about 16 in the films instead of 11. I think it's more believable. So Percy is sent on this quest. Um, he's hoping to find the missing lightning bolt and they find out that they are tricked. They are toyed with. The Gods use them, you know, as gods do. Percy really is the hero um, because he overcomes obstacles, not because the gods help him. They actually hinder his quest a lot of the time. So, very Harry Potter a la Greek mythology. 11 year old um, goes on a quest, saves the day, has friends, you know, as most Journey of the Hero stories go. Adults represented in this um, particular book get the mom who is loving devoted uh the moment he enters camp half blood she's out of the picture though because she can't actually be there she's mortal and not allowed there's also a centaur teacher who teaches him well dionysus who is a complete jerk the whole time percy's father is really out of the picture um unlike the movie where he does have more of an empathy gabe his stepfather is also disgusting in every sort of description of him it's most of the adults are a pain or they're unbearable for Percy, so realistically adults are not represented very great. The book is clearly uh, more towards a younger audience, maybe maybe middle school-esque. Just the idea of adults reading this book is the chapter titles. They're intriguing enough to keep going, but they're corny middle school humor names for the chapter titles. I thought it was interesting after I finished the book to kind of go back and look at the chapter titles. It was basically like one sentence summaries that seemed almost unbelievable when you look at it beforehand, but then after you read the book, you're like, that is exactly what happens in that summary. Chapter number one is titled, I accidentally vaporize my pre-algebra teacher. Chapter number four is, my mother teaches me bullfighting. Chapter 12 is, we get advice from a poodle. Chapter 20 is, I battle my jerk relative. Uh, chapter 15 is, a god buys us cheeseburgers. These titles are so corny and childish, but that's exactly what happens in each chapter. It's an 11 year old kid on a quest so for some themes seen throughout this book about identity, accepting help from others, and also bravery, because this is a more modern adaptation of the journey of the hero. So Percy has to come to terms with who he is. He really struggles through most of the book, being down on himself, being considered not good enough, not smart enough, not strong enough. He's 11 also, so when we take that into consideration, like the idea of what it means to be a hero, you know, he's a middle schooler. He He's not going to be Hercules. He does start to come to terms with being a demigod, what that might mean for not only himself, but also humanity. The beginning 
of chapter one, and it says, look, I didn't want to be a half-blood. If you're reading this because you think you might be one, my advice is close this book right now. Believe whatever lie your mom or dad told you about your birth and try to leave a, lead a normal life. Being a half-blood is dangerous. It's scary. Most of the time it gets you killed in painful, nasty ways. My name is Percy Jackson. He has this identity crisis. Um, so as he goes into Camp Half-Blood, he has to accept help from others. He doesn't want to admit to being weak. He thinks that asking for help makes him weak, and it doesn't. He has to face all of these fears, even if the outcome is him looking weak, because he's not, and he knows that. It's not always about brawn. Sometimes it is about, you know, that mental bravery, making choices, using, you know, strategies in the game helps him. So he has to choose between family and fate. His mom kind of gets brought into this. He has to overcome obstacles, trickery, things that are brought in front of him. Many moments he doesn't consider himself brave. He actually specifically says that he doesn't think he is brave. But through the reflection, uh, Percy realizes that brave doesn't always mean being the most physically strong person in the room. And it matters more sometimes how you feel or where your heart might lead you to make the right choices. The book ends with him making a choice on being with his mom or going back to Camp Half-Blood for the year. So final thoughts. Um, it was really hard for me to get through this book. Not because it was bad. I actually thought it was pretty well written for like a younger audience, but I had seen the movie so many times. I actually love Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief as a movie because of the few ch key changes, mainly the character empathy, emotion range, the relationships in the characters as a group dynamic, uh, Percy's age. I thought the movie is more believable as far as magic realism goes and more enjoyable. I just could not get past his the age, being 11. But I realized, I mean, why is Harry Potter believable to me then if this isn't? So I think I'm just biased in that way. I think one of the concepts of the book that's intertwined Greek drama and YA well um, is this series, you know, using it as the journey of the hero, the Odyssey, having like the Greek uh, mythology aspect and the gods mentioned. All of these things make the book really lovable. It says a lot about the idea of the decisions we make for the greater good, even in our own lives or the lives of others. You know, how hard is it, is it for us to actually leave the comforts of what we've grown to know and sort of what lies right outside that box of comfort. I would definitely recommend this um, probably for middle school students. I think it would be a great gateway into classics, Homer, um, Sophocles, other, you know, great Greek writers.